This week in saving time, we're doing a time favorite. Mac and cheese, homemade mac and cheese. Best thing ever, no boxes. No frozen mac and cheese, no box mac and cheese. We're doing the real thing, we've got cream. Do not, don't, don't, don't skimp on mac and cheese, okay? Don't go with like skim milk or something like that. Go cream, I've gone 5%. If you have homogenized milk, that's fine. But don't, don't skip out on it. All of these sales, Zares, great deal. We're making mac and cheese that would be four good appetites, six regular appetites for, get this, $10. 10 bucks. What, like, seriously. And this is a meal that everybody loves. We are going to add some tomato slices. We're gonna add some green onions. I've got this nice cheddar mix elbow macaroni. That's all we need. I, I mean, this is so easy. I've got a few pantry staples, some butter, some flour, salt and pepper. That's it. We're good to go. I have got a pot of water on the stove boiling. Now, if you're having a hard time hearing me this week, for the first time I fired up the stove and I have to run the fan. It's a gas stove, so you know, I, I don't want to be gagging. <laughs> so we're going to run the fan means I have to speak up a little bit. I'm not meaning to shout at anyone. I'm gonna to try to compete with the fan a little bit. And you at the same time, turn up the volume a little if you're having trouble hearing me. I have salted water here, good to go. We're gonna start right off the bat. Three cups, about one pound of, of macaroni elbows, okay? So one pound or three cups, however you prefer to measure it. Straight into the pot. As soon as you dump it in, give it a little stir. It's most likely to stick in the first two minutes. I'm not gonna leave the spoon in there. I'm gonna just transfer that over like that. There we go, we're in great shape. I'm gonna let that go for about five minutes. We want it to be al dente, not overly cooked. If it gets too soft, then when we add the cheese sauce and bake it longer, it's gonna turn into mush. You don't want mush, you want macaroni. You want it to look like elbows still. So, while that boils, I'm gonna slice my tomato and chop up some green onion. Easy peasy. I've got a bowl ready for my compost. And I'm just going to assume that we're gonna do this in about five minutes. That can go. I better not forget that I've got this pot going. It'll be boiling over behind me and you'll have a new reason to laugh. Give that a stir. There we go, making sure it's not sticking. And I'm gonna turn it up just a little. There we go. Okay, Shannon's gonna yell at me if she sees it boiling over. Well, I'm not paying attention. Tomatoes are $2.99 a pound, and you can see they're lovely. So now, you don't wanna make like giant thick slices, but they don't need to be sandwiched thin either. So, what you're aiming for is I try to cover the surface of my pan. So I'm gonna to need to do two pans tonight. So I'm delivering to two places. So I try to get enough slices. So I think one, two, three, four, five, maybe five slices on that one, two on this one. I want to have in mind that I can get, make sure there's some tomato in every portion is the idea. So what have we got there? We've got four and there we go. I need to sharpen these knives. Golden mackerel, there's four. I'm gonna get one more. And I think that is probably gonna be enough. You know what? I can easily cut one more. <laughs> there, okay, that's it. That's all good. And now we'll get rid of the elastic. And I already trimmed away any that didn't look fantastic. We're gonna lob off the tips. And in this case, I'm just going to use green. I want it mostly for the color. You have a few weeks, you're gonna have chives growing, use them. If you have just white onion, you can use that. It's kinda nice to put something in that shows up a bit. I'm gonna stir that pot. buttered my dishes 
my casseroles, and I'm going, and I've got the oven preheating to 350. If you're doing one, you don't need to divide it up like that. One nine by 13 pan, or the equivalent of, is the size casserole you need. So if you think about that, it's about a three liter dish. So if you've got a nice round casserole, that will do the same. And you can see I'm just chopping these up. I'm not being overly fussy. We want them to show. We want some flavor in there. And we're not going to overthink it. Huh? How unlike me. <laughs> Save those if you've got a good reason to keep them. I'm going to let them go. I won't be cooking again soon enough for that to be useful to me. But if you have something that you're cooking up tomorrow night, keep those. The whites are just as good. We can just set all of this onto this plate that I've got ready. And then we can get rid of this big cutting board. And I am going to check the pasta again. So desserts, yeah, what a good deal, right? And I mean, my goodness, you think you put this together. I think I said cheese, $3.99, which is a great buy. $3.29, it's a good buy, and all of the creams are that price. This bag of pasta, which is two pounds, so that means enough for two mac and cheese. That was uh, one dollar. Huh, huh, rocket, one dollar. What a hoot. Green onions are always about a dollar a bunch. No big deal. We can do that. And I'm just going to set this over here and out of our way. I won't need that anymore. This is boiling up nicely now. And I always test just by pushing it up against the side to see what I think. I think that needs another minute. We can talk about what's coming up next. You know what? I might just set that right out of our way. I'm using the foil pants because we're delivering and I want to deliver it in those pants. So instead of moving it, I don't want it to look nice when it goes to the other house. So I'm leaving it, I'm doing it in foil pants. Whenever you cook in a foil pan, put it on a baking sheet. When these get hot, they get super flexible. You go to take that out of the oven, it could fold practically on you. So if you use foil pans, always on a baking sheet, okay? Just safety first. Not to mention the disappointment of lifting your food out of the oven and having it. Wouldn't that have been a shame? If you cross about that for a while, I would be. We're gonna need a quarter cup of butter. If you have some bacon, if you're the kind of person, like, like me, who keeps bacon grease, using a quarter cup of bacon grease for our roux is nice and will add a little bit of a smoky flavor to your mac and cheese. You decide. You need butter or bacon grease, okay? Don't use like a shortening or anything like that, and not an oil. If you wanna use butter or bacon grease, you want the flavor. I think we're probably good over here now. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Turn that off. And the handles of my pot are probably getting warm. So we need to do this. And here we go, coming around. I've already got a colander in the sink ready. Get that spoon out of there. And we want to rinse it with cold water as soon as we do this to stop it cooking. Okay. Ooh. Wow, a little bit of steam. That's a little spot egg for me. Okay, just give it a good rinse with cold water. That'll do, that'll do. We can just leave that now. I'm gonna use the same pot. There, oh, hot dog, I knew that was hot. <laughs> Literally hot dog, Shannon's laughing at me. I know my tough talk. And I knew it was hot. Oh well, <laughs> it's the way it goes. Okay, back over to the same pot. There's no need to get a million pots out on this one. We're going to keep our lives really simple tonight. So, quarter cup. This one I cut into quarters already. I think I took, said before, you cut it in four sticks. Each stick is a half. Half those sticks, I've got quarters. My bird thumb is going to melt the butter. In 
and she goes. That's it. Now, we're going to start melting that and turn that just to medium. It's still plenty hot. It's melting in there anyway. Next thing we need is we're going to make a roux. And all a roux is, is you're taking your melted fat or your melted butter, you're going to add some flour, you're following a gluten-free diet, cornstarch will work just as well. We're going to add a little bit of ground mustard in there too. Once it starts bubbling, then we're going to start adding our liquids. That's all a roux is. All a roux is. That is all the, those little zipper things. Handy, but they are tricky to open sometimes. Okay. Quarter cup of flour. We can turn that down. We are sizzling over here. It's coming. Coming, coming, coming. Okay. Not quite all. I'm sorry, it's probably hard to hear me now. We're just getting that butter melted. We're going to go a quarter cup of flour and a teaspoon or two of mustard, ground mustard. Matter of fact, I can go ahead and throw it in. And I'm going to put that in. In it goes. We can get rid of this for the moment. And whisk it up. You can see how it's all bubbling up in there. That's what we want to see. One liter is four cups. One liter, four cups. So we're just going to dump the whole thing in. Okay. And whisking the whole time so that what we're doing is making sure we don't get any lumps. Look at that. It's already all smooth. It's perfect. It's brilliant. Okay. This is going to take no time at all. What we're doing now is we're bringing it, we're gonna let it come to a simmer. We're gonna keep it at a simmer. It'll thicken up, we're making the cheese sauce. So now you've just made your roux. We've added our cream, milk, whatever you're using. Whisk to keep it smooth. Lumps are gone already. If you always do it that way, you are never going to get lumps, okay? You have to do it this way. First, you melt your fat, then you add your, your, your thickening agent, cornstarch flour, then your liquids, whisking the whole time. You will not get lumps because what it should do your gravy is the same way, okay? Quit trying to add it to the, the boiling liquid. Do it this way. You will not be disappointed. Every time it's going to come out nice. Should we see if there's another drop? Oh, look, there was. Brilliant. There always is, right? No matter what, there's always a little bit. You think it's gone, and then you go once more, there's a little more every time. It's worth checking. It's not weird to keep checking. Okay, now, in, I'm going to go salt and pepper right now, because we can. Don't be afraid to add salt, okay? Just. I'm going to assume that I've gone about eh, maybe a teaspoon and a half, something like that. And we'll add our pepper after we add the cheese. Now you know what, let's not be complicated. Let's just do it. <laughs> I'll forget, you'll forget, somebody will forget. Do that much for now, about a teaspoon. If we think when we go to put it in the oven, if we think, you know what, it looks like it needs more, we'll add more there. Obviously, people can add at the table. Okay, this, nice and smooth. I'm gonna turn it up just a notch to speed things up. Beautiful, right? Look how easy all of this is. We've cooked the pasta. We've got this just about done, really. So all we're doing here is we're gonna thicken it up. And we're gonna take it off the heat, blend in the cheese. That's it return the pasta to it, blend it all together, dump it in the pot, next thing you know it's in the oven and we're sitting down. How not, right? Come on, it's easy. And I really, I'm not at all sure why any kind of packaged macaroni and cheese feels easier than this does. It really, it doesn't. And so much better, so much taste. Look at what we've done already and we're, honestly, as soon as this thickens, we're five minutes. Too simple. 
just all I'm whisking it for now is to make sure it doesn't stick, right? It's milk, so we don't want it to stick to the bottom. So I'm just keeping it building so that it, it doesn't take up residence anywhere in there. Just keep it going, and you're gonna you're gonna know the we're gonna know when it's thick enough, and I'll show you on the back of the spoon how to tell for sure that it has thickened enough. Right now, we're still it's going to change. It will change, and then we're gonna know it's thick enough. You'll see. We'll do this tricky zipper back up again. It's never as hard to, oh look, <laughs> I was gonna say it's never as tricky to do it back up and then it was. <laughs> huh. There we go. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit about options as well. So when you're doing a mac and cheese, my goodness, the options are endless. If you have some cooked leftover ham, or if you wanna cook a ham, dice it up, toss it in with the, with the pasta when we return them. If you have sun-dried tomatoes, if you have some cooked mushrooms, anything that you think would be a fun addition, go ahead and throw it in. We talked about using bacon fat. For heaven's sakes, if you want to cook some bacon and stir some bacon in there, top drawer, right? <laughs> I mean, whatever you have really is going to go. This is thickening up now. Now we're getting somewhere. It's coming along beautifully. So it's starting, when I walked over this time, it was just starting to boil, and that's really when it takes off. Once it starts to boil, we have to pay attention because it will go, go, go like nothing. I need not to pick that pot up without these. We're going to make sure I don't do that because twice it makes me a fool. Once, oops twice, I'm just not even paying attention. Okay. I kind of wanted to, I didn't have one here, I'm going to get one because it's so handy. When you're doing something like boiling water for pasta and you have to walk away, if you don't already know this, if you put a wooden spoon across the top of the pot, it will stop it from boiling over. Great trick has to be a wooden spoon. If you use a metal spoon, guess what? It gets hot. So it has to be a wooden spoon so that it doesn't burn you. I mean, then you've saved the pot from boiling over, but only to, you know, <laughs> attach yourself to the spoon. So that's not doing you any favors. This is just about there. I can feel it different, and I'm going to get the spoon and drizzle it around and show you. We'll just move this right over to there, stay, get this. So you can see how thick this is getting based on how it comes off the spoon. Do you see the difference? You think about where it was when we poured it in. See that? See how it's coating the back? Look at this, this is a little bit hot. See how I can draw a line in it and it doesn't come together? Guess what that means? Ha uh ha, -huh. done. Oh, <laughs> I'm not gonna do it again. Well, we'll see. I mean, I could. We'll see. <laughs> there we go. And now the cheese. So straight out of there. And we're going to use just about all of this cheese. I'm going to keep just a little bit to go on the top. In it goes. One. We're basically thinking about three cups. I want to reserve about one good handful for the very end to put on top of the casseroles. I'm gonna save that much. So I've got, uh, I don't know, what's that, about a fifth of the bag, maybe a quarter of the bag. And now just stir and look at this. Now, if you've ever tried to make a cheese sauce and had the cheese go stringy or kind of glob up into it, like come all together into a big ball in the middle, oh my goodness, right? Huh. Very disappointing. Thing is, is don't put this back on the heat, okay? Let the heat of the, of the, the, the sauce melt the cheese. So you want it to be at a boil when you remove it from the heat. Look, I just about grabbed that again. You want it, look, see? It's perfect. See how nice this is? Oh my gosh, right? Now we've used a blend of white and orange cheddars. If you use all orange cheddar, obviously you're going to get a deeper, a deeper color of orange in there. If this matters in your household that it looks like cheddar, <laughs> then you don't use a blend. Now, that is just 
perfect, smooth, beautiful, beautiful. Now, next thing we're going to do, I'm going to come back around, I'm going to grab that macaroni out of the, out of the sink. We're just going to dump it in there. Just in case, I don't want to drip all the mess all the way across the floor. So we'll do that. Okay. Now this, it's already sticking together. That's okay because it's going to go in the sauce and separate again. We'll just give up on those ones. There we go. I'm going to put that on there so it doesn't make a mess at the table. And now, <laughs> I'm not doing it again because my thumb still hurts a little bit. Just a little. But it's enough to remind me to be careful. Now see, all I'm doing here, look how good this looks. Now, you know what? Truth of the matter is, you could stop at this point, toss a scoop of this in each bowl, and it's a good mac and cheese. It really, right? Like, it's going to be delicious. If you don't believe me, at this point in the video, if you're cooking along, take a little bite. Mm. Trust me, it's good. So, however, if we bake it, then we get to add our onion and our tomato, and we're going to melt the cheese on top, and it all just comes together and gets better. So, but there we go. Now, if you're adding bacon or ham or anything like that, toss it in now. I'm gonna put our green onions in. Chives, green onions, honestly, anything goes. Whatever you know everyone in your house is gonna like. There we go. Stir it around. All you're doing is blending at this point. You're just making sure that none of that the macaroni is still stuck together. Kind of push it around. You saw when we took it out of the colander and it kind of glued itself together. So you're just making sure that you got rid of any of those lumpy bits. Brilliant. Brilliant. Such an easy meal, right? Really, couldn't get easier. Let's move that out of the way. And this is gonna come right over here. Haha, <laughs> I almost did it. <laughs> Whoopsie. Now, I'm gonna make one. This is a very deep dish. We do not need to fill it by any stretch of the imagination. And I'm just gonna do, ooh, it's getting heavy and hot. Hot and heavy. <laughs> now, this. I wish these candles weren't so hot because I need, apparently, multiple hands. That's not going to work. Uh, no, I know it's going to work a lot easier because I can do that. There we go. <laughs> That's going to work. Okay. And we're just going to dump it in there. Whoop. Mess. Mess. <laughs> so much for that's going to work. Okay. Let's add to this one now. And for heaven's sakes, don't leave any of that beautiful sauce behind. And I got a spatula out to make sure I didn't. Okay. I'm okay now. It's okay. Oh, yeah, see, let's get it all because it's delicious. <laughs> There's no need, we, you don't want to waste anything. Right? We're in 10 bucks. Now, just like that. Look at how easy this meal is. Honestly, here we go, you guys. This is just about done. Just about done. And I've only burnt myself the one time. There's no mark. I'm just going on about it for nothing. Look at this because I don't want to waste. And there we go. That's it. Tomatoes might turn that so that it's more equal in the oven when I lift it up later so all the plates not in one spot. Okay, let's make sure we get one there. And one, two, three, four. I'm going to do it. I'm going to switch. I want a good one on this one. There we go. Huh. Yeah. Oh, look. Oh. There we go. Okay. Dead easy. 
look, this is just done like this. This is who thinks this is easy, like as easy as any mac and cheese. But I'll tell you what, huh, stand apart. Nothing to compare to those horrible, frozen, boxed, nasty, processed cheese. Quit eating that food, okay? E eat real food. Don't do that to yourselves. Enjoy your food. You're going to enjoy it more if it's real. You're going to enjoy it more if you know what's in it. You're gonna feel good about your eating. And I mean, honestly, I think those end up being pretty expensive meals like that. So this is better for you, better tasting, easier on your wallet. How can you go wrong? Win, win, win. Let's just dump it out. Now, that looks great. See? Now, if you were just doing one for yourself, then you would have all of this in one pan. So because I'm gonna divide it up, I want it to do it like that. And there we go, that's it. Look at this, we're going for the oven. I got these breadcrumbs out because I just wanted to point out that if you wanted to, and you know what, what the heck, let's do it. If you have some breadcrumbs or some crushed up soda biscuits, just a little bit, just like that like that. My mom always did crushed up soda biscuits on top of mac and cheese and and it was good. I mean, right? What's not to like there? Just do a little. I don't get carried away. I don't do it every time. So now I do want to put a little bit of pepper. I'm going to use my fingers because I can be way more specific with my fingers. I want them on the tomatoes because tomatoes are better with pepper. I think so. I don't, maybe I just, maybe that's me, but I don't eat a tomato without pepper on it. I don't know why, but if I make a toasted tomato sandwich, it's all about the pepper. That's it. Now, into the oven. Ah. There we go, got it. 30 minutes, I've already set my timer. That's it, 30 minutes at 3.50 and start. There we go. I'll see you in 30 minutes. You'll be ready to eat. So in 30 minutes, have your table set, ready, straight to the table from the oven. I'll see you soon. 30 minutes is up. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. Oh, wait till you see this, wait till you see this. Oh, it's done. My goodness. Now tell me that anything that comes out of a box looks anything like that. It's beautiful. Close this up. Oh, it's hard to work today. There we go. Look at how nice this is. This is so nice. Look at that. What you want to see is that bubbly. Okay, that's how you know it's done. You want it to bubble up. I should have said earlier, if you wanted to make this ahead of time, say you have time in the morning, you want to get it ready so that when you come home after work, in the oven, done like that. All the same, before you bake it, bring it up to room temperature. So as soon as you get home from work, take it out of the fridge, set it on the counter, let it come to room temperature, and then into the oven. Might take a little bit less time, might take a little bit more time. What you want is that bubbly bit when you lift it out of the oven. You want it bubbly. That's all there is to it. You can freeze this before baking. So again, before you put it in the oven, cover it, seal it up with some foil, put it in the freezer, when you're ready to eat it, let it thaw to room temperature and then into the oven for 20 to 30 minutes at 350. This is supper, it's beautiful. These sales go until Wednesday, so that's the 28th. And what a good deal. We're gonna plate one up so you can see how nice it looks on the plate. And I'm thinking, dangerous, <laughs> and this, at the prices we just paid, so until Wednesday of, ne of next week, this is coming in at $2.50 a plate. $2.50. $2.50. I honestly, I, I'm not even kidding. I don't know what you buy for $2.50. The chocolate bar's like almost $2, right? Like, let's get that, just let, let's think about all the things that cost $2.50. Bag of chips, a chocolate bar. I, I don't even, right? Like. I don't think you can buy much of anything for $2.50, but you can make, look at how big this plate is. Look at this, this is beautiful. $2.50, 
you're never going to regret doing this, I'll tell you that. I'm sure there's been times when you've bought, you know, you pay good money for frozen meals, whatever, and you cook them up and they're only okay. And you paid a lot of money. You probably paid more than you paid for this. This is beautiful. $2.50. The only place you get this meal for $2.50 is your own kitchen. Get cooking. Quit letting food eat up all your time and money. Cook the food, eat real food, take good care of yourself and your family. Bon appetit. Hi there. Don't forget, if you enjoy the video, you watch the video, share it with people you know are gonna to wanna to cook this kind of good meal for their families for these good prices. Subscribe, hit the little notification bell so that you know when the next video comes out. I'll see you next week.